first stream I've done in a long, long time. Uh, it is Saturday night. The Coco Show, Coco Talk just went off. What else am I going to do but play some arcade games? And I thought we'd start off this evening with the ARG Presents Game of the Week. This is Popeye, um, Nintendo classic game. A game that I'm not very good at. I'm going to try my best, though, to uh, set a good score. Looks like I'm peeking a little bit on my mic volume here. Let me turn myself down. There we go. All right. So if you've never played Popeye before, uh, every this is a collection game, an item collection game. So what you're doing is your lovely gal, Olive Oil, is uh, tossing down hearts. Oops, and I just forgot the button to use to, uh, to punch those empty bottles. I'll try that again. Anyway, uh, Olive Oil is throwing down some hearts here. And what you've got to do is you've got to uh, collect these hearts, not get hit by Bluto, and uh, eventually you fill up the, if you look up the upper left corner of the screen, you'll see there are uh, places where you can, uh, when you collect the hearts, that's where the hearts are stored. I'm going to die again. So yeah, it's just horrible, horrible start. Let's do it again here. The idea is that I'd like to at least get on the high score board, put up a, a halfway decent score. See if that's possible. Okay, so that was the warm up game. Oh, almost got, never actually successfully gotten Bluto to uh, get the old barrel on the head. This is a game that does not let you stop. It forces you to constantly be moving. Um, unlike uh, Nintendo's later game, Mario Brothers, uh, the impediments to staying in one level uh, come out immediately in this game. Unlike, uh, you know, in the Mario Brothers game, you are, uh, the fireballs don't come out until the at least probably the third level or so. But in this game, they're out and about from the get-go. The which is represented by the witch chucking the empties there. Hey, David! Hey, R-Typer! How's it going, guys? Good morning, David! Did you pull an all-nighter last night? Hey, Jason! Merry day after Christmas to you, my friend! How are things up in, uh, in Canada? You guys have Boxing Day today, right? I'm, I'm getting there, guys. I am dangerously close to filling up. Ah! Yeah, that's the, the... The tough thing about this hobby, David, is that it seems like you never have the right thing for the, at the right time. And when you do have it, sometimes it's broken. <laughs> I go through that with the Amiga for the past five years. Uh-oh. See, what I should have done was grab the spinach and use the spinach, because it was really close. You know, strategic use of the spinach is, is imperative. The GoTech is still here, David. Uh, I have not uh, had a chance to give it to Aaron to check and see what's going on. We'll probably have to wait until we get together again to figure out what's going on, because, like I said, that, that LED, the segment in LED stopped working, and the... Uh, and I, I don't know if it's it's a problem with the GoTech itself, or if it's a problem with... It can't be a problem with the OLED or the LED, because they both don't work. So my guess is that the problem is with the uh, is with the GoTech itself. I don't know if I, you know, by powering it on and off too much, I somehow messed it up. Oh, jeez, come on. There we go. So now, of course, Bluto will run like heck to get away from you. It's your job to track him down and give him the once four. But, you know, I'm not even able to do that, so. Hey, Jost. How's it going, man? Glad to see you this evening. Okay, sounds good, man. I'll pack it up and put it in the post to you this week.
you can see behind me, it looks as if the 1000 is, is, is working, but it is in fact a Raspberry Pi hooked to the 1702 that it's playing some uh, Amiga Christmas stuff. I can't get off this first board. I can't get off this first board. Yeah, the hearts of, if the, yeah, the hearts eventually go away, David. And what happens is when that happens, you also lose a life. So this game is just brutal. It's brutal from the outside. The one thing I'll give this game though is that uh, you can punch pretty rapidly. Like, there's that last heart. Come on. Um, and so when the when the witch is throwing the bottles at you, you can defend pretty well. So that's that's one game, one thing this game has going. So in this level, olive oil is is uh, throwing musical notes, and so you're completing this song at the top of the screen. And one cool thing you can do, you can only do it once per level, is you can jump up. Wait, I guess you can do it more than once. I guess you do as much as you want. I don't know why I thought you could only do it once per level. Another thing I like about this game is that there is no fall damage. So that, you know, that makes me happy. That's one of my big gripes with Donkey Kong Jr. It's just the fall damage. It seems so unfair. So you can hear the music change there. And I'll let you know that you better get yourself in gear. Oh, geez, I didn't even see that. That empty. Oh, 8,300. I mean, that's just a pathetic score. I gotta go one more time. I gotta go one more time. My original plan... Yeah, for, hey, 48K Ram. This is, yeah, this is Arcade. This is part of the ARG Present Score Challenge that is going on this week. And my score is pathetic. So, uh, if you are good at Donkey Kong, feel free to submit a score. And just post it in the ARG channel in Discord. So, actually, no, David. It's funny you mentioned that. Um, I just got done using my joystick, my very expensive uh, Heibusa uh, Hori stick that is totally, like, probably one of the best sticks you can buy for home use. But the problem is, is that the, with these four-way games, this is really just a two-way stick, actually, um, you can't get the right angles for, like, one over. They're really set up for, for good diagonals, but not for good cardinal directions. So uh, I had horrible results with that. What I need to get is one of those, uh, I basically need to get a replacement gate, uh, an octagonal gate to replace the square gate to give myself some, uh, you know, a, a, a good place to sit with the cardinal directions. Um, the, uh, the stick itself, I could actually just swap out, you know, parts from my arcade machine, um, but uh, then I'd be left without sticks in my arcade machine, so. Oh, jeez. You know, I, I I haven't played this one in real life too much. I remember um, growing up, there was a supermarket called A to Z. It was our local supermarket. And um, they had a, a Popeye machine, but that was the only time, and I don't remember I ever playing it. I've always been intimidated by this machine because it's so difficult. Oh, man. I just had total, like, I don't know if I was pushing not hard enough or what, but... Okay, so we've done better this time. We've made it off the first board um, with a higher score. Um, so, ideally, you know, if you're really good at this game, it's all about where you catch the notes. You can see if you catch, and you can lose a life just like that. If you catch the note right, and that you know, the higher up on the screen you catch the note, the higher your score. Um, that might be possible, David. Uh, it, it is just a piece of plastic. That's literally all it is. Um, I've never thought to look up on Thingverse or whatever. Okay. So I'm going to write this down. 1150. Actually, I guess I'll just take a, take a screenshot with the old game box or capture tool here built into Windows. So yeah, that's probably going to be my best score. All right. Time to move on. Yeah, it would have to be, it would, I, I, like I said, I haven't really looked into it, but I don't want to say no. This is another one of my favorite games. 
Oops, pushed the wrong button here, and now we've gone all the way back. You might have heard me talk to Aaron about this before. You know, this the, the coin ops interface is very flashy, it's very nice, but the problem is that this, there's no key, you can't just type the name of the game that you want. They haven't built that into the interface. So you do have to scroll up and down. All right, let's hit the right button this time. Could it be this button? Yes. Okay. So, Portman. Have you guys heard of this game before? Well, this is a game that the Brent turned me on to. I do need to set my controls real quick. It's a one button game. There we go. And what you do in Portman is you catch uh, the parcels as they fall down and then you toss them back up onto the ship. But you have to be right in the middle of the parcel or you won't pick it up. It'll just go right by you, like you saw. Actually, maybe you have to push your button. You do have to push your button. And then you just push your button again and stack it up there and you get bonus points, for, of course, for having matched colors and things like that. So. Okay. Yeah, Portman, also known as Dock Man in some countries. Um, I'll show you another man game that you might not have seen before after this, 48K. Uh, you do have these robotic hand carts that become a, a problem later on, too. So you can see I've knocked the, the enemy off, the enemy porter. This gives me a couple seconds to do nothing. Ah. Okay. So as you can see, my bonus is ticking down pretty quick. Okay. Let's see if we can get off this level here. So did you guys have a good Christmas? Anybody uh, anybody have any uh, fantastic stories of Christmas daring do? Did you did you spend today? Uh, you know, having Christmas on a Friday is pretty nice because then you get the whole weekend to enjoy whatever gifts you might have received. Anybody spend the day playing with anything new? I'm not gonna get the bonus here, obviously, but we're just trying to. It's really not the bonus, it just it knocks the guy off. All right. So the next level of this is real wacky. Um, this In this level, what you're doing <clears throat> is you are catching letters, you're throwing uh, rocks and catching letters and avoiding uh, the rocks as they fall. So the, the port man, or the dock man, he has many jobs, many jobs in life. Oh, come on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I guess in uh, Norway it's the same thing. The, uh, it, uh, what we would call Christmas Eve is really more of your Christmas. And then don't they have, uh, don't they have, don't you guys celebrate um, St. Lucy on uh, on the 13th also? Isn't that another one of your big um, holidays, Jost? You know, those, uh, I'll tell you about those uh, postcards, David. They actually came, the only place you can buy those is from the Apple campus in uh, Cupertino. They are not available anywhere else. So, uh, my, uh, my brother got them for me a couple years ago. His wife uh, grew up in, um, in Sunnyvale, and so her family, uh, but now her parents live, like, practically across the street from the Apple campus, so they picked those up for me, but, you know, I, I just didn't really ever, you know, aside from looking at them and thinking they were cool, I was like, you know what, I bet, I bet Dave would appreciate these. 
because I know that you're you're amassing a Mac collection. So yeah, I, I saw it on a uh, there's a, there's a guy here in the states called Rick Steves Jost, and he travels around to Europe and does a series on our public television. And uh, I remember seeing the the girls with the candles on their heads, and it's like a you know a sort of youth you know late young lady activity. Uh, beyond that, I don't know anything about it, but it's cool. I'm a big fan of winter holidays because you know when it's dark outside and it's cold, you want to have something to lift your spirits. I'm doing pretty well so far here. I always like the tune in, in Portman too. It's a jaunty tune. Uh, I guess we'll just throw those up there. Ah! Yeah, that's Arizona is uh, you're. you're I won't say you're lucky to live in a in a more tropical climate. One of the one of the things I hated about living in Thailand was that it never got cold. Um, I am a person of the four seasons. <laughs> I enjoy having multiple kinds of weather. Um, when it's summer and summer's over, I'm ready for fall. When fall's over, I'm ready for winter, etc. So, but different strokes and all that. Oof. All right. So now I think we've got a bonus stage that's coming up, if I recall correctly. Oh yeah, your lady just takes that guy out. I like that a lot. Okay, we're back to here. This is where the game gets a lot more difficult. I don't, I don't know that I've ever made it past the second dynamite level. And I haven't, because that's the end of the game. So anyway, that was Portman. Um... Pretty, pretty fun, obscure game. Nova Games, 1982. All right, so I want to. We'll do another man game. It's a manly man stream tonight, and we'll do get up here to the these. And we'll play a little game I like to call... Where is it? Uh-oh. Don't tell me it's not on here. D-O... Oh my gosh, it's not. Well, I was gonna show you a game called Domino Man. But it's not here. Uh, Domino Man not included in uh, in this collection. I'm gonna have to have words with Aaron about that. All right. Well, we'll do something else instead. We'll play uh, my favorite arcade game since we're already here in the do in the D's. We'll play Do Run Run. Uh oh, I need to stop hitting the wrong button. Yeah, that sounds right, Joss. That sound that sound sounds reason. You know, uh, Saint Lucie in uh, in Italy, otherwise known as Santa Lucia, is sort of the patron of sailors. And there's the uh, the big lighthouse in the port city of Santa Lucia, and uh, there's that song and all that stuff. So the whole light thing with Saint Lucie is is definitely a big thing. All right, and I apologize. Um, because I don't know what I'm doing. I have to set my controls in all these games. This, the, uh, the coin ops interface is awesome, but I just haven't taken the time to really get it set up yet. So, Okay, but we are ready to rock and roll now. So I'm just going to kill myself. And we'll have a proper game. A proper game of Do Run Run. Have you guys seen this game before? I said it's probably been six months or more since I've done an arcade stream. Um, 
this is my favorite arcade game of all time. This is Do Run Run. This is the third in a series of four Mr. Do games. Mr. Do series uh, by Universal, released from a period of probably 1982 to 1986 or so. Uh, this game was released, I believe, in 1984. Um, and uh, this is, it's a Pac-Man-like maze game with a lot of different mechanics. So there's a lot of different ways to win and get points in this game. So you'll notice that I'm making a white line with my path. And what you can do is you can surround the, uh, the dots that turn into different kinds of fruit. And the more times you surround them, um, the, the higher the, you know, they, they, the, the, they change into different types of fruit. You can see like peaches change into lemons. Lemons change into pineapples. I think pineapple is the, the top one. And so like, that's a good, it's a good way to, to rock up points. So the pineapple is the top and they're worth like 160 per each. I think that the dots are only worth 10 each, yeah. So you can see it's a, it's a huge multiple. So if you can make loops and, and encase things, you know, kick style, uh, then you can rack up a lot of points. Uh, another way to get points is by triggering these guys to come out. And if you hit the letter, it destroys everything else and you get all those other points too. Uh, this is on the Amiga. Uh, we covered this... Um, Oh, it's been a while. It was on one of our Arcade Spectacular shows. Uh, it's definitely been more than three years ago at this point. Uh, this game did get an Amiga port, and the Amiga port's pretty good. Oh! Man. Wasted life there. Hey, Mitsuyama. How's it going, man? Welcome. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy, Jost. Yeah, I don't know if I could get used to... Uh, Having that 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 little sunlight. I mean, I'm sure I could get used to it, but it would be tough. I don't like it when it gets dark here at like you know 5:30 or so. So what I've done here is I put myself in a real bind. Oh man, actually that was that was super awesome. <laughs> what what just happened there? That's about the most points that I've ever gotten in one go on Do Run Run. So I, this guy up here in the corner. Sometimes the AI gets a little bit confused. Hey, thanks for the sub, Mitz. I appreciate it, man. We appreciate it. I know Aaron does too. Yeah, this is this is pretty much the pinnacle of you know complexity when it comes to uh, these maze type arcade games. Um, but you know, you don't have to know all the rules to, to have fun with it. And that's the, that's the important thing. It's that old mantra. You know, it's e easy to learn, hard to master. Um, you really don't want to waste these logs too early. And then, of course, uh, one of the hallmarks of all the Universal games is that you collect extra for an extra life. You get a cute little cutscene. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, what is the what's what's the what's the warmest it gets in Sweden in the summertime, Joss? Does it get up above forty ever? Oh, another thing is that you you also collect the dots, root, etc., to recharge your ball. So it's important to have a route to go through for when you fire a ball, you have to recharge it. So. And then, of course, another thing is that there's a multiplier, like when you let your ball bounce back and forth, like it was worth twice as much because it bounced against the, the wall of the screen first and then came back. So that's another way to rack up points. What you want to do is you just want to get them all, yeah, something like that. But that, where I got the, the extra guys in there too, that was, that was a super awesome maneuver, if I do say so myself. <laughs> So I could really use oh. out of practice, out of practice. Laurent K twelve hundred TS twenty one. Laurent is here. What's going on, man? 
I can see I'm still clipping a little bit in my mic. I'll have to turn myself down a little bit. You know, David, talking about Apple stuff, I don't know if you've listened to the, today's episode of This Week in Retro yet, um, but we talk about uh, the original Apple II schematics. This is like two pieces of loose leaf note notebook paper with some circuitry drawn on it hastily and crossed out. Just sold for more than half a million dollars at auction. It's a crazy, crazy Apple world we live in. If you are in the Apple collecting game, this is the time to get in because it's only going to get more expensive from here on out. Oh boy, I'm on the run from this guy. Come on, come on. Yeah, that was an unbelievable amount of money for two scraps of notebook paper. Wozniak loves it though. That's true. That's true. Unfortunately, I'm also one of those Apple crazy people, so. But my Apple collecting, I've pretty much gotten all, what I want. There we go. That's a good log roll right there. What I don't want is this T. This T is useless to me. Um because I already have the tea. I'm glad you enjoy it, Joss. Neil and I really enjoy making it. It's kind of funny, because uh, when I do it, I'm barely awake uh, because of the time difference and because I have to go to school um, in the mornings. Uh, we record at 6.30 a.m. for me. For Neil, it's a, a much more decent hour. Oh. Thanks guys, thanks 48k. So you can see that at this point in the game, the enemies get a lot faster. And at this point, I really should have an extra life <laughs> because these things get going so fast. And I don't need that stupid T. <laughs> need an R or an X, please. Um, you know, it's funny, I had the opportunity, 48K, to get a, uh, to get two Apple II Cs with monitors for like $150, including shipping. And I said no, and I regret the decision. It was part of a deal that Aaron did to get some Amiga stuff. And this guy, you know how computer collectors are. They'll put one system up for sale, and then when you say you're interested, they're like, well, I've got 18 other things too, do you want these as well? And so, oh, we're, we're almost there, guys. If I can just get an R going on here, we'll be in good shape. Okay. At this point in the game, when these guys change form, they're so fast. You've got to run over these things to recharge your ball. Although, I will say, I'm having a pretty good game. Uh, this is above my average run. I have gotten over 200,000 points in this game before, but it's a few and far between. Well, Joss, the, the, the problem is, is that um, these computers are, uh, you know, it, in theory I could sell them off, but I, I, I uh, packaging stuff like that up and selling it I always get nervous about because it's these things are very heavy. They're very prone for break. Oh yes, here we go. So here's my uh, little cutscene. Get an extra life. Um, but you're right. I could have. I mean, the the Apple II C isn't isn't crazy bulky, but I'm always afraid of stuff getting damaged in the post. Like I've got two G3s that I'd love to sell, but I'm just scared to death to sell them. I've got two blue and white G3s. I'm just scared to death to sell them because um, I know that they'll get damaged in the post. Those plastics are just so brittle. Um, whenever I do, you know, 
sell off the collection out of need at some point in the future. Um, I'm, Uline makes some uh, some uh, foam, like self-inflating foam stuff that basically conforms its shape around whatever you're shipping, and I'll go that way. And Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that was Do Run Run. One of the, you know, probably the best game I've had all year, Do Run Run. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, anytime I can score over 100,000, it's a good game. All right. So now it's time to open. Thanks, guys. It's time to open the floor to some requests. Anybody have a game, an arcade? We're doing arcade today, so anybody have an arcade game they'd like to see? Satan's Hollow, good choice. Good choice, Dave. We'll do Satan's Hollow. I'm not a huge fan of Sinistar, but I do like me some Satan's Hollow. Um, sure, 48k. We can do some Williams something, something Williams. Uh, in fact, I've, I've got it. I've already got a, a game that we can do that's a Williams game that I, I haven't played in a while. Um, oops. All right, Satan's Hollow. Shoot. Sorry. Luckily, SA comes pretty soon in the alphabet. That's right. That's, I need to just have it set up to where it will, you know, both buttons do what I want it to do, because I never use that favorites thing. All right, so I'm already queued up with eight credits, which is pretty good. Uh, controls not set up correctly, of course. All right, now we're set. So Satan's Hollow, pretty unique take on the um, Space Invader genre. I guess it's more of a Galaxian type game. Come on. With the shield and all that. Knowing when to deploy your shield, remembering to deploy your shield is very important. Because, you know, these these uh, dragon things really go in for these kamikaze attacks. I'm with you. I'm with you, 48k. Uh, all of my favorite arcade games, I would say 95% of them come from before 1984. I think after 84, things just got... People, they, they really started running out of ideas. Again, I did not use my shield well. Oh, we're still in it here. Alright, let's try again. Ranking is 11. Alright. Build the bridge. Let's see. You're right, I forgot about the bridge, Dave. Um, Neo Turf Masters is great. That's one of the, the, the games that is post-1984 that I really like. A lot of the Neo Geo uh, Turf Master, or a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the Neo Geo stuff is, is solid gold money all the time. Shield. Nope. Already out of shield. All right. Uh, 
it's time to destroy these guys. Oof! Man, that was brutal. That was brutal. Still, my ranking is 11. I wonder if that's good enough to get on the score table. Nope. Okay, let's do one more time. One more time, then we'll move on to a Williams game that I haven't played in a while. Now, do any of you guys own arcade games in your home? Yeah, I, before I moved to this house, it would have been a pipe dream. Because this is the first place that I've lived where I've had the room to do something like that. Are you thinking about getting into the scene, Dave? You are the man among men, Joss. You frequently pay, play super high in the uh, Neo Turf Masters Classic. <laughs> I was trying so hard to not suck. That's cool, Darkwing. What pinball machines do you have, man? Hey, if somebody offers to get like get you one, like a free one, because if that's the case, you need to jump all over that. <sighs> you know, there's a real art form to using the old shield. All right, so never quite got above a ranking of 11, but still a lot of fun with the old Satan's Hollow. All right, so I'm going to show you guys a Williams game that you might have never seen before. Hopefully it'll be on here. We won't have a... Uh... A domino man situation. A lot of B games. There it is. So this is a game. Let's hit the right button. Oh yeah. Aces and Spades. Great, great old EM game. A custom roller derby table? Oh, that sounds awesome. All right. Let's see if I can remember how to play this. All right. First, first things first. Controls, important. Okay, so from what I can recall, your job is to hover up all of the small ants and the, uh, uh, that thing, and then you just travel down there and it's done, right? Nope, that's not how you do it at all. Let's try again. All right, we won't bother with high score this time. All right, let's do it again. I'm trying to remember how you actually escape the level. Maybe you have to wait until the thing is flashing red and then you can escape. Oh, nope, uh, maybe the, when the thing is flashing red, that's when you, uh, that's when a baddie is about to appear. There we go. It's when the, when the thing flashes green. You know, I, I've got lots of friends that, that are uh, big pinball guys, and they say the same thing. I I don't know. The, the, I'm happy with, uh, with my single table, mostly because I don't have enough money for a second. I, the hobby, I've been priced out of the hobby, is what it comes down to. Um, you know, I got a killer deal on the machine that I have, and um, all the machines that I'd want, I could never afford. And it's not like I want like new machines either. Um, and it's not like I want uh, um, 
um, you know, the big name tables like Next Generation or Adams Family. Um, but just every you can't you can't get in you can't get into the game for under a thousand dollars anymore. Not unless you want some beat down you know old EM machine or something. Let me out of here. That's pretty cool though, Joss. I mean, uh, how common are pinball machines just in general in Sweden? Like, do you see them? Do, do lots of families have them? Come on. There we go. Yeah. And I don't have the skill to uh, to do to do rebuilds. That's a whole. That's a totally different set of you know skill set than doing arcade machine stuff. Arcade machine stuff, I'm so much more comfortable with doing. Oh, you don't want to run into a razor blade if you're made out of water. All right, let's go. Yeah. So, anyway, you wanted to see a Williams game. Bubbles. It's a Williams game. Uh, I think that... Um, I'm not sure if this was a arcade. I, I'm guessing it wasn't a trackball game. I guess it was a joystick-based game. It seems like a game that would be well suited for the trackball. Uh, trackball, though. See you, 48K. Have a good dinner, man. Thanks for hanging out. Have you guys, uh, you know, speaking just of your skill at the Neo Geo? Uh, it's been a while since I've played myself some uh, wind jammers. You guys familiar with wind jammers? Not common at all. Yeah. Um, I knew, a, I think I saw one or two people, you know, growing up that had pinball machines. They were always older machines. Um, getting out of control here. This is where I, I start to not understand how MAME works. Okay, there we go. Now we reset. Okay. Okay. I think we're good to go. Um, it's funny you mentioned your, your small hold town is only 25,000 people. Um, you know, Hurricane, where I live, is much smaller than that. Hur Hurricane, we, I think we have less than 10,000 people in our town. I live in a quite, you know, re West Virginia is quite a rural state, and I live in a rural place in a rural state, so. Yeah, that's the same way with, uh, Aaron and Brent. You know, they got, they got quality machines for less than a thousand bucks. I think the most expensive machine that they bought was a, um, they got Who Done It, and I think they paid 1200 for that, but I think they paid less than 1000 for, like, WWF WrestleMania, um, they got a Pac-Man pinball I think they only paid a couple hundred bucks for, so. Yeah, I do need to set up the global controls. I don't think, though, um, let's see here, like, general controls... Yeah, that's probably what we need, right? Good thinking. I forgot, I, for some reason I always thought like the general controls were um, for the user interface, but it's not. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, player one, button one. Go with that. Okay, so we're gonna try wind jammers again now that we've got controls set up correctly. Darkwing, what's your the favorite your favorite game that you own?
Oh, I see what you mean, Jost. I always have a hard time when it goes up in the air. I want to, I want to monkey around too much. So Dave, I want to ask you a question too. When you decide to get into the arcade game, what are you looking at? What's on your wish list? Ah, dove the wrong way. I've heard lots of good things about Simpsons Pinball Party. Uh, I've never played it though. Oh, I keep trying to aim the shot, and it's not—it's not doing what I want. Come on, let it drop. There we go. Finally, some points. <laughs> Yeah, you turn that on when you got company over, and they'll they'll freak out when they hear that that cabinet uh, with that voice sample. I have uh, two at the moment. Um, let's see, we'll go with a BU. Um, I've got a, a Mario Brothers machine, and then I've got what's commonly known in the hobby as a Dynamo Z back cabinet. But I don't think it, that's really the name of it. Um, yeah, it's a, a generic cabinet that they they put you know conversions in. Uh, I've converted that into it. Look, uh, I've basically styled it like a Neo Geo. Um, you can actually see it oh, over there in the corner. Um, Aaron actually sold me that machine, um, and because uh, he was trying to free up some space in his building. And so uh, I sold the CRT that was in it, repainted it, redid all the electronics on the insides, and redid the control panel. Um, and uh, I'll show you the, here's the, let's wait, rotate the camera around. There's the Mario Brothers over there. And then I've also got a triple action uh, pinball machine, which is a Williams machine from 74, uh, right there. So that's the extent. And then I, in the past, I've also owned a Double Dragon 2, uh, machine and that was my uh, I fixed that up and sold it on to for other projects because really I didn't need two main cabinets and that was just I was using the double dragon as a main cabinet um, yeah that 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 triple action machine is a killer machine it's so much fun uh, most EM games are not a lot to write home about in the uh, in the play department but uh, that machine really is. It's really, really fun. It's got one of the spinners that you get hit, and you know, it rotates around. And the triple action is when you spin the spinner enough to make the score go up to where everything's a triple, you know, three times the score. It's really fun. It's a really fun machine. Yeah, I'd love to go to, there's a show in uh, Pennsylvania uh, called, Al or it's in the city of Allentown. Um, every year it's a huge pinball show and i'd love to go up there one year and just check check out the machines and see see what things are going for you can pick up some killer deals there because people you know they bring these massive collections of games and they don't want to bring them home so if you're looking to get deals that's often the place to go all right i guess they get oh because i had i was up five hey picard how's it going man um, but right now, uh, I don't really have a lot of wants as far as arcade and pinball machines go. I do sort of regret not buying an Arkanoid. Uh, there was an Arkanoid, and I don't think it was an original cabinet, but it was just in this really, really cool looking cabinet, um, when I went to the auction where I bought my Mario Brothers. But I sort of, I wasn't sure what I was going to buy at the time, and it came up for auction, and then it went, and... Uh, I didn't know if I could fit multiple machines in the trailer that I bought, so or I brought with me, so I didn't pick it up. But if I had a chance to get a uh, an Arkanoid or a Centipede, you know, something with a non-traditional control style, definitely a Tapper, a uh, Paperboy would be fun, stuff like that. So, 
Anything that's not just a joystick controlled game. So I can do all that stuff on the main cab. Of course, who wouldn't love to have a, a cockpit Star Wars machine? That's like the ultimate dream. But those are high, high dollar these days. Oh, totally my fault. Have you been to Allentown, Darkwing? Oh, shouldn't have been lingering. Yeah, just right there. Thank you, Just. Yeah, generic cabs are still, I mean, you can still find a generic cab. Well, I don't know how, you know, in Sweden it's definitely a different scene probably. But you can still find deals on just broke down generic cabs that you can put a computer in or whatever. Like, that's what I did. I bought a, a, a just an i5 Dell, you know, from Business Surplus. Uh, and it's plenty powerful enough to run, you know, the most demanding arcade games pretty much. Unless it's something that's really new. Um, and then I uh, just bought a, uh, you know, big monitor and put it in there. And I'm happy with it. Oh, you're in Arizona too. Okay, We've got multiple Arizona people in the chat this evening. Oh man! Hey, Edvin, you're up late this evening. How's it going over there? Oof! I'm getting destroyed by my mirror image here. Bu does not mess around. How's the family, Edvin? Are they all happy with their uh, with their Christmas gifts? It looked like you guys had a great dinner the other night. I'm always jealous of your lamb and liquor and good times. I'm gonna have to make it over to Norway for a Christmas Christmas season one year. You know, Josh, those uh, I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming. That, well, you know, you could always go the arcade one up route and get one of those bar top machines that they sell. Or, you know, there's tons of companies that do it. Just arcade one up springs to mind. Um, but yeah, those, those little tabletop machines are pretty nice. Little bit of snow, that's great. We had a lot of snow. A lot of snow. All right, so I'm up for another um, recommendation. If anybody has an arcade game they'd like to see, I'm open to anything. So there's off road. I just did the uh, that comparison. Gone in two hours, just there and there and, and melted. Um, if you haven't seen Ladybug before, this is this is sort of an obscure game, but it's one of my favorites. This is another Universal game, same publisher that made Mr. Do. Uh, and this is just another take on the maze game. This game is uh, all about opening and closing gates and knowing how to manipulate the, um, the power-up system. So you can see that there are different colors to the, to the pickups. And what you want to do is you want to collect all the hearts when they're blue and then all the letters when they're red. And that gives you the most points. In the meantime, you wanna, of course, avoid the nasty bugs. And once all the bugs come out, uh, there is a fruit you can collect, just like Pac-Man. Um, but it's very dangerous. Uh, oops. One of the things that I like about this game is that the enemies are often killed by friendly fire. You can see that the the sort of board game track going around the edges, that kind of lets you be able to guess when the things are changing color. But you only get a split second to pick them up when it's red. But again, that's that's where you get the most of your the majority of your points if you can get them when they're red. That's awesome, Edvin. What's on the menu for tomorrow, do you know? Being able to just you, you close the gates right behind the guys. Get 
that cucumber. That also freezes the bad guys. Then you come in here and you sweep up everything else and boom. Yeah, we, uh, we really... It, it's very uncommon for us to have a white Christmas. Um, and, uh, so I think this was the first one in, like, five years or something in Hurricane. And, uh, our road was still super slick. Um, Eep has a, uh, we have an SUV, uh, that she drives. And I'm glad that we have it because, uh, we live outside city limits and our road doesn't get taken care of. It's just like you're on your own. Um, and so, uh, I guess it was really slick getting out of the, uh, getting out of the neighborhood this morning. The AI in this game is really interesting. The enemies behave very erratically. It's like they chase you, but they're also dumb. So... You can see they, they just, they frequently destroy themselves. Like I said, I, I love the gate mechanic. I think it's super cool. Oh boy! Yeah, we don't really, we don't, snow tires are not really a thing here. Um, because we, it, it, the, the problem is, Edvin, is that we don't get reliable snow. Like, some winters we just don't get any snow at all. And so, um, so we don't really, like, change our tires, I guess, with frequency because we don't know when the, when the weather's going to hit or when it won't. Um, the, uh, I, I think that, that that's something that we don't really, we don't really think about, really, as snow tires. You're, like, seasonal tires in general. I will tell you, that's one thing, one of the reasons why I didn't end up buying a Jaguar last time we bought a new car was because that rear-wheel drive was just, the, it was the worst in the snow. I used to have a Volvo, and it was rear-wheel drive, and it would be, like, one inch of snow, and it would, it would just, it would not be non-functional. So, well, that makes sense. I mean, I don't, I don't imagine that a lot of your vehicles are four-wheel drive either, are they? Are they mostly on the, the kind of the European small car range? I can't imagine you guys are driving pickup trucks all over the place like we are here, or SUVs. Is there a law that you have to have snow tires, like, what, how does the law work exactly? Like, is it like you have to have snow tires on your car by this date, or else you're going to get fined, or... That's awesome, Mitsuyama, I just saw that. Um, did you guys get a lot of snow? How many inches did you guys get? So that, that's a good score for me, uh, that... Nah, that's a good ladybug score for me. Okay, so yeah, first December every year. So it's like clockwork. You just you know that's when you put them on. That makes sense. Yeah, I I you know as much as I wanted to have that Jag, it was a sweet looking Jag. Um, the rear wheel drive thing, plus the fact that they you know like if anything were to go wrong, it would have been expensive to to fix. So we ended up going with the Hyundai. It's the safe, boring option, but that's the way it goes. All right, it's time for some I'm sorry. One of my favorite arcade games. So if you've never played this before, if you've never seen it, you're in for a treat. You play Japanese salaryman, and you collect money, and you run around and jump. So you do have a little bit of a grace period, Joss, where you have like changing times. You lose all your clothing when you get hit. <laughs> I 
Oh, I'm sorry to hear about the flooding, though. That's, that's no good. But yeah, when I... Oh, shoot. Jump. <sighs> oh yeah, I forgot you can punch the salary man. I forgot about that. That's, or they, not this, you are the salary man. Your, your colleagues, I guess. I forgot about that aspect of the game, that makes things easier. Um, but yeah, when I lived in D.C., uh, you know, D.C. is not famous for its, its major snowfall either. And uh, people would just go insane when there was the smallest amount of snow and they wouldn't be able to deal with it. Versus in West Virginia, people know how to deal with adverse weather conditions more, more easily. this door is not opened yet. Do I have to destroy all the gates? I don't remember that being a thing, but maybe I do. Or maybe I just have to go back out the way I came in. Huh. Weird. No, I, normally this door should open... Unless I've got to hit the door. Let's try that. Okay, I guess I just have to hit the button. Yeah, well, the big, you know, another reason why I didn't go for a sportier car is that we have so many just weird inclines as you come in and out of, um, you know, uh, various elevations. Um, I scrape up the bottom of my car like crazy just like pulling in and out of places like the post office and stuff like that because nothing is flat in West Virginia. Everything's on a hill. So. This is an arcade, Edmund. This is a, this was an arcade game that you put a quarter into and play. Probably not in the United States. I think this was a uh, this was a Japan only release. Alright. Let's do one more. One more arcade game. What are we going to do here? Still disappointed that Domino Man is not on the uh, in the collection. Oh, you know what we should do is uh, is Gyrus because that is uh, the last game that uh, Aaron and Brent are going to talk about this week. Tinkle Pit. Okay, Buck. All right. I'll, you know what? I'll do. You, I'll do. You, I'll, I'll. I'll. I'll take care. I'll take care of both of you guys. We. I did pop by at the beginning of the stream, but we'll go back to it. I'll tell you this. I am not a good Popeye player, so don't expect any any tips. But I do want to try and increase my score a little bit. And then we'll do Tickle Pit after that, Buck. I will say that this looks better than any other 1983... Or I think this came out in 82, actually. Uh, I don't think there are any other 1982 arcade games that look as good as Popeye. If you know of any, tell me. Because this game looks darn good for a game of this vintage. So, if you have never played Popeye before... What you do is you remember what button is your punch button. Um, and uh, you're collecting these hearts. The hearts mount up in your Popeye cabin. Meanwhile, you have to avoid the witch who chucks bottles at you. The higher up you collect the hearts on the board, the more points you get. So you really want to stick around up at the top of the board to get the most points. However, with Ludo about, it's a difficult thing to do. And you can't just let the hearts linger at the bottom, because if they if they disappear off the bottom, then you lose a life. I've, you can hit Bluto if, 
you, like you said, Mitz, you can manipulate him to where you can get him to go underneath that that bucket, and then you can know, you can knock him out that way. But it's very difficult to do. At least it's very difficult for me to do. This is your, of course, your kind of like smart bomb super move. The problem is though, is that you, you get like a five second break and then Bluto is back. It's not even five seconds. I mean, he immediately reappears. So even from the beginning stages, this game is just so unforgiving. I think Nintendo realized this because their next game after Popeye was uh, Super or was Mario Brothers, and Mario Brothers is just so much easier to play. All right, we're gonna do this one more time. I can at least get to the second stage. I'm not sure how many points you get if you can get the barrel to fall down on Bluto. You know, if you hit the punching bag, etc. Come on, come on. Oh! Nope, I missed it. And the thing is, like, Luda, he knows that you're coming down there, like, when a heart goes down there, so he's gonna, he's a smart guy, old Bluto. Shoot! So, you know, Brent is great at this. Uh, Aaron believes that he's good at it. We'll see how good he is. Like, you can really get fooled into thinking you're good at Popeye if you only play the home conversions. Like, he plays the Coco version all the time. The Coco version is so much easier. Like, I can beat, I can loop the Coco version, no problem. Yeah, I'd like, I'd be happy to give him the bucket uh, at any, at any uh, uh, altitude. Because uh, I have a hard time doing that. Buck, what's your high score on this game? This seems like another one of these games you're probably awesome at. believe that, Buck. I don't believe that at all. Come on. Come on over here, Bluto. Ooh! No! It's also a problem when you physically just can't uh, punch the thing correctly. This sucks like, when that happens and you get trapped. Because another thing to remember, too, is that the only place you can go through is where the signs say threw up at the top. So you're stuck on one side or the other. The Odyssey 2 version is great. Brazilian Popeye. I'm so close. So close to getting past the end of the first level. Stupid mistakes. Stupid mistakes. I only need to get four more hearts. I can totally do this. But Buck Owens, it does, it does do my heart some good to know that you, you, your your skills are not awesome at this game. I'm not the only one that has trouble with it. Okay. So we made it past the end of the first stage. So now we're catching music notes and you have far fewer music notes to catch which actually makes this stage easier in my book unless you just do something stupid like run right off the edge onto Bluto's head and so ends the game all right so 
That was Popeye. Now, what was the other thing we were going to do? Uh, Tinkle Pit. All right, let's do it. I didn't know there was a Three Stooges arcade game. Hmm. That'll be one for the future. Oh, um, there we go. Oh, this looks great. This looks like my style of game, so let's do it. Make sure we press the right button. Thank you, Mitsuyama. I knew nothing about this game and never played Tinkle Pit before. Of course, it's for sale exclusively in Japan. Namco game, so it's coming from a, a good publisher. So we'll go to general. Oh, we've already done that. We, we shouldn't have to do it again. Okay, start off first stage. Okay. So. Looks like you only get one ball. So this is sort of like a Mr. Do type thing. This is that. Okay, that's the ball I'm carrying. I like the music. Alright, do I have to um, kill these guys to get to be able to leave the stage? Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, so I, I think I understand how that works now. So you've got your ball, but then you've also got your little your little tinkle pit. And what you do is you hold the button down, and that stretches out this guy like so, and then you trap the enemies in the string that he leaves behind. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like it. How did you find out about this game, Buck? I like the fact that it's got like unlimited length too. And you, you got your multiplier there. I love any game that has that sort of mechanic, that like sort of pressure luck mechanic. I want to get up there and get that item. Give me the shoes. Oh, I missed the shoes. Oh. Where did the other, I guess I beat the, okay. Oh yes, the pie factory. Are those guys still going on? You know, I used to talk to Sean a lot back in the early days of the podcast, but then I kind of forgot about the the pie factory podcast. Is that still going on, Buck? These are a little dig dogs. Oh, I didn't see that guy. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to have to check them out again. I forgot about the Pie Factory podcast. Cleared. I wonder if this got a PlayStation port. Do you think it did? Yeah, the trouble with doing homebrew podcasts, and this is something that, you know, like, a bunch of people wanted me and Aaron to do uh, something with the next, is that, you know, like, eventually, there's just, you, if you're if you're trying to do a regular show, you're going to run out of new releases versus, oh boy, versus if you, you know, if you, if you do both, and then you always have something new to talk about. Man. I'm gonna have to put some more time into Tinkle Pit because that this is exactly this is like my favorite kind of arcade game. Just that single screen, sort of bubble bobbly, Rainbow Islandy, do run runny. Um, so yeah, that's cool. That's cool, Buck. You know, we, we have you listened to the interview that we did with Sean in one of our first episodes on Amigos. I want to say that the Pie Factory podcast started about the same time that uh, Amigos did. And, uh, yeah, it's it's like episode, 
episode five or something like that. Um, we do we do a, a, a interview with uh, Sean Courtney. In fact, I'll tell you what. Sean Courtney. Ideas. It's a uh, episode ten. Episode ten. So. All right, Edvin. Thanks for stopping by, man. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy the rest of your uh, feasting season, too. I'm all about that. In fact, guys, it's time for me to uh, hit the road. Not really. It's time for me to just end the stream and get some water. But uh, thank you for hanging out. I don't even know. Let's see. I don't have a good way when I'm in coin ops to... Uh... Looks like we got Buck Owens is here. Cobrian, Commander Root, Darkwing602. Thanks for sharing your uh, pinball knowledge with us. David, uh, Edvin, Frodo, Frodo is here, but also not here. Yeah, we'll have to raid Frodo for sure. Um, Miss Lenity, Picard2010, and R-Typer, thank you guys so much for being here, and we will raid Frodo. Let me just pull up my other screen, and then raid, and here we go. Get ready for Frodo time while he's playing Spectrum. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Adios.